Hey guys, I'm Chris Cheney and this is my Royal Enfield Rider's View. As everyone knows, I love playing guitar and playing in a rock and roll band, but I also like uh, riding motorcycles and which is a relatively new thing for me, but I've grown up around motorcycles because my father used to race when he was a much younger man, he was in his 20s I think, he raced bikes and had long given it up by the time that uh, he got married or had kids. But we grew up going to all the races at, in Bathurst at Easter time, always around motorcycles. Dad used to watch it on TV all the time, so he was an absolute enthusiast. So my earliest memories really um, are of always being around motorcycles and even my early drawings as a kid were always of bikes. So I was kind of fascinated by it. It just took me a long time to actually get my own motorcycle, but I finally got there. I've had a lot of people ask me why I chose a Royal Enfield. And it's an interesting story because my wife actually bought me the learner's permit. Well, she booked me in to get my learner's permit because, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I'd, I'd always been into motorcycles and always kind of threatened that one day I would get one or I'd, one day I'd get my license and just never got around to it, you know. And so she kind of bit the bullet and paid for me to get my license. So handed, handed me the handbook, said, there you go, you're booked in now. So from that moment, I actually started kind of properly looking around for different bikes. And I was driving to a gig in Melbourne one time and uh, we're driving down the freeway and uh, we're driving past this bike. And I thought, that's a really cool looking motorcycle. So I snapped a photo of it and put it on my Instagram stories, uh, not really knowing what kind of bike it was. And then I met Darren from Royal Enfield and who reached out to me and, and said, hey, you know, do you ride? Is this, this the kind of bike you're into? And we sort of struck up a friendship. And then I did a little bit more research and I discovered just how versatile the Royal Enfield bikes are. That, um, you know, for me it was kind of like, they're kind of like the same guitars that I play, which are Gretsch's. They're very adaptable. They're very kind of rock and roll looking. They have that old 50s, 60s kind of aesthetic, which is right up my alley. So we started talking and he introduced me to the Interceptor, um, the 650 Interceptor, which just happened to be learner approved. And I just fell in love with the bikes and so it kind of stemmed from there. So when it came around to me actually finding a bike and buying one, it just so happened that the photo that I had taken that day was the exact same bike that I ended up getting. Um, but I had no idea at that point. I just thought, oh, that was a really cool sort of old school cafe racer style kind of bike that I just took this snap of, which I very rarely did that, you know. I mean, I've always been into bikes, but I wouldn't sort of deliberately take photos of them. So it's kind of funny how it turned out that like a year and a half ago, that very bike is the same one that I ended up getting. And um, I'm so glad that I did because they're so adaptable and I've just managed to kind of, you know, customize and modify the bike to exactly how I want it to look, which I don't know whether you can do that with, with every motorcycle, but the Royal Enfields are really kind of, really easy to do that. You know, you can just kind of, you unscrew this and pull it off and put a different bit on and paint this bit. And so I loved that side of it. A few of the things that I've done to the bike, one of the first things I did was I swapped the white Baker Express tank and got a black tank, ripped the badges off, got a stencil, drew that, cut it out and sprayed it. Um, for me, it was all about making the bike look as kind of Mad Max and as tough as possible. So that was the first thing was to try and um, make it more black all over. The seat, I got covered. Um, I got one of the of this black cowl put on the back, which makes it look a bit more like a racing kind of bike. You can see I've got smaller indicators that I put on and a smaller stop light. All this stuff, by the way, was done at Midlife Cycles. There's a plug, Michael, you can thank me later. It was all about kind of streamline the bike and same with the front, smaller indicators. I found that the ones that come on the bike are a little bit too big and sort of clunky. So I took them off. 
Different handlebars. These are um, Biltwell handlebars. And there's a plug for Biltwell, you can thank me later. Different grips. The bar end mirrors is one of the main things that I think people do on their bikes to kind of um, improve the whole look. So I guess it's all about the kind of profile of making it lower and kind of streamlined and more slick. I got the Verex exhaust put on, which made a huge difference in the weight of the bike, in the look of the bike, and most importantly, we started up the sound of the bike. <laughs> It's very important that it sounds like a motorcycle, and I think it does. I've painted a few bits here and there, painted the back bit, painted the tank as we said. Um, you know, it's kind of, I, I treated the bike a bit like a canvas, I just kind of took to it and um, put some pinstriping on here. I don't know, I've got a whole long list of things I want to do, but that's kind of where I've started, so it's a never ending journey. It's been a really great thing, you know, riding motorcycles because it's just been this whole other outlet. And, you know, I don't know if it was the pandemic or, or what it was, but it's been a really sort of creative, great time for me because I've just, I've been doing all this painting, which probably may not have happened had we not gone into all those lockdowns and, um, so I started sort of doing that and, I, and you know, riding the bike and just kind of being able to, to get on that and take off and clear your head has just been a really amazing thing. And so between the painting and the motorbike riding and I've got a solo record coming out, it's just been a really sort of great couple of years for me, I suppose, um, on a number of different levels. And the painting's been great because I've met people like David Bromley who it's become a bit of a, a friend of mine and he's an absolute motorcycle fiend. He's got all these old crazy bikes, all these old Harleys and Indians and Triumphs and and it all kind of goes together, you know, it all kind of fits with, with, we're all into the same things, you know, we're into like rock and roll and painting and bikes and um, Keith Richards, you know, it's all kind of, it all falls under the same umbrella. So, um, yeah, I'm just really, I'm really enjoying it. And I, I just, I'm kind of glad in a way that, you know, it took me this long to kind of finally get on a bike because I'm a little bit more sensible now. But um, it was a great feeling to get rid of the L plate and the, uh, and the yellow vest. And so that was, um, that was kind of a uh, momentous moment, sort of putting the, the L plate into the rubbish bin and burning the yellow vest because, you know, Safety first, folks, but um, rock and roll's only a little bit behind that, I think. And so, you know, it's much cooler wearing a, a leather jacket than a, than a bright yellow vest. I suppose, um, you know, everyone talks about when you're on a motorcycle, the freedom that there is. And it, it's just true, you know, you don't, you don't sort of realise it or understand it until you're actually on a bike. It's a bit like, you know, when you're when you're 18 and you get your license for the first time and you're in a car and you think, oh, I can go anywhere. I can go to Macca's or I can go, you know, I can just drive and, and, and no one's gonna sort of say anything about it because I'm on my own now in the car. And it's a bit like that when you, when you first get your, your license on a bike too. It's kind of this freedom and it's just, I guess because you're kind of, you're on the machine, you know, and you just, with, with the turn of the throttle and you, feel it and you know and, and you hear it and it's just it's very difficult to describe what it's like until you're actually on a bike and um I don't know I don't know whether it's in my blood I think it is just from, because of my heritage because of growing up around motorcycles and and seeing so much footage of old you know motorcycle racing I mean I grew up in the era of like um you know Wayne Rainey and and Wayne Gardner and Mick Doohan and all that sort of uh, Roger Freeth, you know, these were these were guys that were kind of heroes to me because these were guys that my my dad was, you know, really into and used to always watch all of their races and um, and I remember how exhilarating it was to watch the footage of those guys racing. When you actually get on a bike, it's 
it's an experience like no other. And so it's, for me, it's just, I, you know, I kind of, if I'm starting to feel a little cloudy in the head or I just feel a little bit kind of stressed or whatever, you just jump on the bike and you just go. And, um, you know, you come back clear head, ready to, um, you know, create whatever it is, ready for a new day. Um, all right, so that was my rider's view, my Royal Enfield rider's view. And um, so onwards and upwards, what's next? I have a, a solo record coming out and it's called Storm Before the Calm. Uh, it comes out on June 17. And the first single was called California. Uh, and if you're watching the video, you will see a cameo by none other than my Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. I had to have the bike in there. So you'll see that at the end. And um, what else? I don't know. Happy riding, safe riding. Thanks for having me.